Hey everyone, welcome back. Ready to dive into something interesting. Today we're tackling how to get the most out of learning. You know, making it really count. And we're going way back for this one. 2002 to be exact. 2002. Okay, I see some eyebrows going up, but stick with us. We're looking at a paper on instructional system design. ISD, for those in the know. ISD, yep. Even back then, folks had opinions on how to do training. Right. This paper by Guy W. Wallace dives into some complaints about ISD that feel surprisingly current. Yeah, it's funny how some things never change, right? One that jumped out at me was the speed or lack thereof. This paper was saying ISD is too slow back in 2002. Imagine what they'd say. Now. Oh, absolutely. We're in a world of instant information now. If learning can't keep up, forget it. It's like trying to read a whole textbook when all you need is one quick answer, which, hello, the internet gives us instantly. But it wasn't just speed, right? This Wallace guy also talks about how ISD was missing the mark on creating solutions that actually worked on the job, not just in theory. Ah, uh, yeah, the classic training that has nothing to do with my real work dilemma. I bet we've all sat through one of those. Oh, haven't we all? And it's so frustrating. It's like being given a map to nowhere, just a total waste of time. But here's the thing that really bugs me. Wallace points out this assumption that learners need everything spelled out for them. Like, we can't think for ourselves. The hand-holding versus enabling debate, it's a good one. Yeah. Especially these days when people are used to figuring things out on their own. Exactly. We're flooded with information. We learn new things all the time, often without some formal program. So why do so many training programs still treat us like empty vessels? It's like they missed the memo about the Internet. How much people are learning all the time on their own terms. Okay, so we've got these complaints. Too slow, out of touch with reality, and underestimating the learner. And here's the thing. These haven't magically gone away. And that's why we're talking about this 2002 paper. Because, get this, buried inside is this idea. Lean ISDSM, he calls it. Might just have some answers we need, even now. Okay, now you've got me really curious. Lean ISDSM. Break it down for us. What is that, and how does it fix these issues? Well, well, picture this. We're building something, but not just any old way. We're using blueprints. We're thinking about every step, kind of like, I don't know, like a really well-run factory. Okay, so efficiency is the name of the game. Making every step count. Exactly. Lean ISDSM, that's Wallace's thing. It's about treating training not just as, oh, we got to do this, but as an investment. Ooh, I like that. An investment. So like putting money in, but expecting something valuable back. Right. And it all starts with looking at the big picture, the whole life cycle, not just let's make this training and be done. Life cycle. So from like, it's got to be used for years, kept up to date and stuff. Yeah. From birth to, well, maybe not death, but like when it's not useful anymore, got to plan for that too. That's way more in depth than just throwing together a few slides, huh? More like planning a whole, I don't know, a building or something. Good analogy. Just like you wouldn't build a house without a foundation, right? <laughs> I got to think, will this design still work in 10 years? Mm -hmm. Kind of thing. Makes sense. Otherwise, you're constantly fixing leaks and stuff. So yeah. with lean ISDSM, we're making sure the learning lasts. And that it's worth the investment. This is where it gets geeky. Hold on. Oh. Lean ISDSM borrows ideas from how software is built. Modularity, it's called. Modularity. It sounds techy. Is that like breaking things down into smaller bits? Ding, ding, ding. We've got a winner instead of one massive training. It's like, what are the building blocks? Smaller, reusable bits. So instead of a whole Lego castle at once, you figure out the best brick designs first. Yes. Yeah. Then you can use those bricks for tons of different builds. Saves time in the long run. Way more flexible too, right? Like if I just need a wall, I don't have to buy a whole Lego set. Exactly. Learners get what they need when they need it. No more. Here's everything. Good luck. Okay. Now this sounds awesome, but also like a lot of work up front to make all those Lego bricks or module. True. It's an investment. But think of it this way. Would you rather buy cheap tools that break or invest in good ones that last? Okay, good point. So we're putting in the effort up front to make learning resources that are like high quality and built to last. Right. You're building that awesome Lego collection that you can use for years to come. And just as important, got to keep those Legos organized. That's where the life cycle thinking comes in. So it's not just make it and forget it. You're always checking to see if your training is still relevant, updating things. Exactly. The world of work changes fast. Learning needs to keep up or it's useless. Lean ISDSM helps us stay ahead of the game. And you know what? Wallace actually gives some examples of this working. There's this one 
really stuck with me about an oil company, big one. They had a bunch of engineers retiring, the experienced ones. Oh, yikes. I can imagine all that knowledge walking out the door. That's a tough spot for any company. Right. And back then, they were freaking out a little. They had all these new folks coming in. But how do you replace decades of, like, hands-on expertise? Traditional training wouldn't cut it, huh? Too slow, too general, probably. Exactly. So they took a gamble, tried this lean ISDSM thing. They used it to really zero in on the stuff these retiring engineers knew, the make or break stuff. Okay, so instead of generic training, it was like, here's exactly how we do things here. The shortcuts, the insider knowledge. Right. They made it super specific, broken down into those modules we talked about. Made it easier to digest, too. And what happened? Did this lean ISDSM actually work for them? Wallace says it was a huge success. They saved a ton of time and money compared to how they used to do training. Wow. So win for the company. But what about the learners? Do they like this new way of doing things? That's the thing. Lean ISDSM. It's not just about saving money. It's about making learning better for everyone. More engaging, more effective, less of a drag. So it's like if the training is good, people actually want to learn. They remember it better. They use it on the job. Exactly. It's a win-win. And that's what makes this whole 2002 paper so fascinating. Yeah. Sure, tech has changed, but people, not so much. We still want learning that makes sense, that's easy to use, that's relevant. It's like you said before, the tools change, but the basics, they stick around. Right on. So to wrap things up, if there's one thing to take away from our little deep dive here. It's that we can learn from the past. Yes. Don't be afraid to dust off those old ideas. See if there's something still valuable there, like this lean ISDSM. Maybe it's not a perfect fit for every situation, but... But the thinking behind it, that's what matters. Absolutely. Thinking about efficiency, about the learner, about making sure the training actually makes a difference. That's what counts. Well said. This has been a fascinating look at how we can design learning experiences that are effective, efficient, and dare I say, enjoyable. Couldn't have said it better myself. So until next time, keep those minds curious and never stop learning. See y'all later.